up at the top right of the mat. Will this be the root of his path to Code S? I am C. Playing very well thus far. There he is. And down here at the bottom left, the man who is greatly responsible for the state of esports today. Very true. Slayer's boxing. And for those of you that don't know too much about his history, don't worry, I'll keep myself from ranting too much, but uh, the reason I say that is because Boxer not only has been around for a long time, but he has always been a showman. He's always been a showman. I don't want to say first and foremost, but definitely it's been high on his list. Boxer fighting, Emperor number one. He He's like, I, I wanted to say this in the last game, but I, I didn't say it. Um, he's, he's like, uh, he sucks the energy out of fans and he uses it, man. He yeah. actually has this ability to connect with the fans in such a way that I feel no one else ever has. Yeah, well, he he, he does what he does for the fans, and he's, he's one of the few players who actually, in some situation, puts entertainment above winning. And that is one of the reasons why StarCraft grew as a spectator sport, was because Boxer and others made it entertaining, especially early on when it was just a fledgling... Uh, and if, competition. If some of you guys uh, have heard this craze about the boxer, I, I want. I mean, I know we have kind of gone around about this, but it's it's so important. If you're a StarCraft fan, you want to know more of the history of StarCraft. Go and watch the Boxers Wings documentary because there's yeah. a lot of awesome info in there. It looks like we're gonna see a uh, command center. Actually, he's hiding it from the pro, but it didn't quite work out for him. Uh, but yeah, go watch that documentary if you want to get some more information about Boxer's life because it's really really awesome to know and check out some of his old bods and things like that. But Enough on that, the probe does see the command center. Nice attempt by Boxer trying to sneak that out, but it didn't quite work out for him. Yep. And it looks as if we're going to have a very similar build from Seed, so probably not going to be anything too yeah. crazy going on. Because he, he actually even got a you know, second pylon before his core. Skipping the, uh, skipping the Stalkers just like last game, getting the faster Nexus. Yep. On this map, Cloud Kingdom though, because Boxer built his command center on the natural, it's not like he's going to get the advantage he got last time, but still, it's good for him because he can't really pressure with the Stalkers against this type of build. The bunker will be up too early, and uh, I like the choice of getting the faster Nexus. It's really, really quite smart. It's something that a lot of Protosses have started to do recently, but it isn't as standard, I feel, as it should be. Three racks going up for Boxer. Behind this is actually going to go up to four racks without gas. So he's going to be putting on that Marine pressure after this. And I like this because he knows his command center was seen. So he's probably thinking, all right, see, last game when you saw my command center, you scouted that I was going to go for a fast command center. You made a fast nexus. In this case, he'll probably do something similar. Though I can hit you with a timing with about 8 to 12 Marines, attack your base, kill some probes because you're not going to have the stalker count you need. And if you make a sentry even, you're going to wish you didn't because I'm going to have so many Marines attacking you. That timing is going to hit much faster than the timing we saw last game with some Marauders. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to be in a lot better place for Boxer, who's playing a little bit timidly. Uh, well, defensively, I should say, in the previous game. This game, he's just going ahead and taking that risk, and it's going to pay off for him. So yeah, he's going to have a lot of units very quickly. Already up to, looks like, seven Marines. Yeah, he's going to push out with four eight. more in production. Yep, constantly producing four at a time off of those four barracks, not missing a beat for this macro. Catching a stock here, nice micro by seed, but the marine count very high, and a few more marines are going to join here. Looks like Boxer's not actually going to commit to the pressure. And it's scary, it's scary to commit to the pressure, even if your opponent has just one stalker with good micro, use a lot of hit points, and what if he, uh, you know, didn't actually do what you expected, but looks like he's going to commit now, his marine count now up to 16, 12 of which in the group, moving forward. There are a lot of sentries out for seed, and sentries are not very good against marines, but he will be able to delay this if the marines try to run up the main path, which it looks like they will, so sentries will end up being useful, but they're not going to be useful in combat. Oh, he's actually oh. going to bait them in here. Nice force fields. Very nicely done. Traps only a handful of marines, so we can just fight those marines alone. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that Boxer fell into that trap. That yeah, was, that was an obvious trap on that ramp. I cannot believe he tried to go up the main ramp. It's kind of silly. Now he's going to go up the right, but his timing has been missed. There are chimney stalkers out. Good force seals here. Even the Zealot coming in. Pulling back the weakened sentry and Boxer losing a lot here, Mole Trap. Oh, no. Well, I, I don't even know. His marine count is just so low now. He's down to seven marines. 
Yeah. And C d doesn't quite have the army to just go and kill Boxer at this point, but it means he's going to be ahead and Boxer's he's going to have the advantage. Yeah. He's going to force Boxer to make some bunkers. He's frantically trying to get those bunkers up, and the Stalkers are actually going to chase down even more Marines, and Boxer is in trouble here, Moltrap. The Stalker's not... Oh! oh. I was going to say they're not wasting any time, but then Seed pulled the Seed and just decided to like dance around with his units instead of fight. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so Seed, it looks like he is actually going to go around the side when he's going to go for this attack. I like that. He doesn't want to fight on that ramp because then Boxer has the potential to just you know, kill his units coming up. So now he's going to go a little bit safer around the side here. Third bunker going up for Boxer. He knows that there's some trouble going on here. SCV's pulled preemptively again. Very nicely done. And he's used some force fields already, so he doesn't have a ton of force fields. He'll have enough to maybe surround the bunkers, but then not to use them for anything else in the battle. I feel like he's going to target down SCVs here, then get out. Yeah. Nice. Force Hills trapping the SCVs. Gets a few SCVs. He's just going to go home now. He doesn't need to fight this anymore. He's actually, I guess, going to hang out here a little longer. Getting Hallucination, interestingly enough, as he takes a third next. He has actually essentially done the exact same build twice. He's also got this Twilight Council and First Forge at the exact same time as last game. So the only difference here is the Hallucination. He's pressured exactly the same, gotten his third base. This seems to be kind of like a variation of a build that Parting did on this map, where he, instead of powering up to eight gateways, is starting to tech. Kind of a different route, but he pressures to keep his opponent off his back. And I really like this style. Because he doesn't have to commit. He killed a few SCVs even. He forced three bunkers, and SCVs are off the line. He just goes home. Templar yep. Archives finishes at home. He can start Storm as soon as he hits that gas. I love this. Yep, and the third base going up for Seed as well. That's, that's kind of what I was talking about before, where he, he's probably not going to kill Boxer, but he has the advantage and he can use that to tech up and get his economy thriving. So very nicely played by Seed. Boxer is going to have to do something to try and break out. He already got his third command center, but it's going to be hard for him to actually secure that third base. Something to note about the difference between this game and the last game for Boxer's build is because he went for the four barracks rather than teching, his plus one is late, his stim is just not finishing. He is getting a second in eBay and his armory and his starport just like last game, but they're all late. He has no ability to pressure with drop ships. He can't uh, do a big push on the third. There's nothing he can do, and he doesn't even have a third base. You know, he, he doesn't have a third base able to be secured. He's moving the commands over there now, but there's a pylon near there, and as soon as Seed sees it, he's going to attack. He's got a better army. He's actually not active enough right now to, to be checking for that, unfortunately for him though, to check and uh, punish it. Now, fortunately, Boxer is on top of it with the Ghost Academy. He actually got it uh, last game a little bit later, but this game he's got it. Right now it's about to finish. Uh, just as Storm is finishing, so there's a brief window where he's kind of off guard, but once he gets those ghosts out, he'll be able to uh, EMP Templar or snipe them like we saw in the previous game. And he timed that uh, armor perfectly so he can get his 2-1 upgrade started as well. Very important to make sure that your upgrades keep going against a Protoss player, otherwise they can get really out of hand. And a hallucinated Colossus. Oh, wow. So smart oh. hiding the Templar, showing the Colossus. Wow. This is going to force Vikings rather than Medivacs. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, this is what Seed's known for, Moltrap. This is actually what Seed is known for, man. First the Immortal. Now he's doing it with Colossus. He's known for his tricky hallucinations. That is such a good idea. This is, I mean, that's the kind of thing the Boxer would come up notice, with if he was Protoss. Notice he intentionally showed the Colossus at the Watchtower and the Viking reaction from Boxer to wow. see the fake Colossus. Oh, this is so smart. This oh, is wow. Seed, he's back. That is so cool. I love that, man. He purposely did not fire with the Colossus, just like he did with the Immortal before in the Team League so many months ago. That is such a good plan, and I mean... Uh-oh, the Boxer's gonna catch his army in an awkward position! Oh, but he... Nice force fields trap a lot of his units so they eat some Psy Storms, and he's not comfortable going up that ramp now. A feedback kills one of the ghosts Ah, uh, well. Boxer scans, he's like, wait a minute, there's no Colossus there! He scans, he's like, Oh, it was a fake! Immediately cancels his Viking, starts more ghost production. Three ghosts additionally on the way. Smart reaction by Boxer, he's like, oh, it's a fake! He kept a couple of Vikings, but yeah, very nice move. And he's gonna be forced to lift that command center and evacuate so the SCVs. Storms. He's got a lot of storms there. I don't think Boxer has any ghosts left either. No, he does not. He can just basically not fight this with those storms available. And no, he has nothing to do about the storms. He just can't fight. No, no, the SCVs are going back into the slaughter. No! 
Only a few being taken out there. Command Center tanking some some shots here. Hallucinated Phoenix goes in. He's actually going to check the composition one more time. See if there are any ghosts. I really like this build by Seed. He's adding double Robo. Now this opponent has started ghost production again. He's going to be going into Colossi. Uh-oh, the Templar is stuck at the back. They have a slow movement speed. Will he catch him? He snipes once. Will he snipe twice? Oh, but he sends the army back in. Oh, and oh. feedbacks the ghosts as they try to retreat. They do manage to survive, but they have no energy anymore. Man, Seed is like a magician in this game, Mole Trap. He is actually juggling all the... He's like, I don't know, he's juggling the tech, man. You don't know what he's going to do next. Yeah. it's That's exactly what he's doing, man. He's He's got... He's got a bowling pin and a machete and a chicken, and he's throwing them all up in yeah, the air. Man, he's and you don't know which one is going to be in his hand, accessible to use at any given point Dude, in time. You forgot to mention there's also like a robotic support bay being juggled in there as well. <laughs> you don't know, man. <laughs> he's like got an infestation pit. Watch out. <laughs> but uh, I, I really like how he's splitting his units here. He's actually going to try to send some zealots into trade and draw the boxer's army away from the third. He's actually got a group of, by the looks of things, 10 zealots to draw a flank of Boxer and then attack into the right. Either way, he's got a fourth base going up. Boxer making four Vikings at once now, realizing, okay, the Colossus change is actually coming this time. A small army from here proceed. Archon tanks some hits. And Boxer, oh man, if there's only a couple Storm, well, there's actually only a couple Templar, but they actually have two Storms each, I believe, so never mind. That could be pretty dangerous. Bull trap is Boxer over making toast? I feel like he's been doing that a little bit here, and well, now these zealots are drawing the army. Oh, he cloaks them though. He is actually going in with those ghosts. Well, these zealots come in for a little bit of a sneak attack. He's cloaked all the ghosts. He's going in, but there's an observer, and he catches all the ghosts. Every ghost dies. No! Every, Every ghost, ghost dies. dies, and the Templar are completely unscathed. And no the zealots in the main aren't even done, Moltrat. They've killed a lot of units. Boxer's gonna have no EMPs and no snipes. He's gonna only dodge storms. Storms oh, on no! Oh, oh, Boxer! Storms. storms on everything! I have never oh. seen better storms than that, man. Oh. He actually moved command in. A huge misclick by Boxer. And now the second wave comes in, and there are Colossi in the mix, Moltrap. No, the Emperor looks like he is going to be dethroned today, Wolf. I he think has you're right. only a few reinforcements, and the command center is going to go down. The Zealot slaughtering the SCVs. They're on attack move, man. He's losing all of them. And Boxer, I think, is going to die here. The Vikings have been lifted. There are only two Colossi, though the Zealots forcing a lift. There's way too many units here, the upgrades. It oh, seeds no. favor, and he crushes through EMPs on the Zealots, but it doesn't matter. 170 supply to 63. Boxer might be his heart off, but will not be enough. No, the Colossus are doing so much damage, killing the depot on the ridge. The Zealots forcing him back into his base. GG, Boxer has been defeated. And ladies and gentlemen, Incredible Seed Miracle is Seed back. is on fire. Don't worry, he actually isn't on fire. I He's not he actually fine. on fire. <laughs> it's just a metaphor. But, well, uh, I am impressed. He played really well. This is the kind of thing that you see on a bad Team Liquid strategy forum <laughs> post, okay? This is the theory Wouldn't it crap. be great? Wouldn't it be great if you could hallucinate something and get him to switch tech on accident? Well, he actually did it. it he is actually the, pulled it off. It's like the little theory craft that could, okay? Seed has pulled it off. He's done it once before with Immortal yeah. Tech. He faked his opponent out into thinking he was doing a bust. He never once let the Immortal fire. Now in this case, he intentionally checked the Watchtower, saw that something was there, poked up with the Colossus into the Watchtower range, moved back immediately, Boxer cancels, goes, starts Vikings. Then, Boxer though smartly did scan later and he was like, oh wait a He's minute, like, wait this a is a second. fake. So yeah. nice reaction by Boxer regardless, but Seed engaged in all the right places. The Zealot flank, he sent Zealots in one direction. He had a double Robo, he's making Colossi. Boxer doesn't know what to think. His brain's going crazy. Yeah. And, and everywhere. he got the double Robo right after he like scanned the goat, uh, the Templar and was like, oh wait, I gotta stop Vikings. He's like, haha, you're not making any Vikings now. He made a bunch of Colossus. Great pylon coverage by Seed. Great timings on his bases, getting the fourth base up. So even if the Zealot attack didn't draw Boxer's forces back and Boxer was able to defend, he's like, well, either way, Boxer, you're still sitting in your third base, and yeah. I have a fourth, and I've got really good upgrades coming out. So I have and to hand it to Seed. Smart decision-making. You know what he did, Wolf? 
he just outboxered Boxer. I guess you could say because that, Because yeah. that is exactly the kind of play, uh, to be honest, that Boxer has been known for in the past, doing clever things. You know, half of the clever things that were ever invented in Brood War were invented by Boxer. And it's like you said you earlier, know, we have kind of old school versus new school here. And exactly. it looks like new school wins out. New school wins out there. Uh, anyways, I've got more to say about Boxer. I always do, but we're going to take a quick break, I believe. Don't go anywhere. Lenok versus July Zerg is going to be next. Don't want to miss it. Make sure to tune into the other stream as well. See you guys